Hi, um, name is Mr. Price. We are now on Unit 3, Biology A Review. Uh, the first place I'd like to start is on uh, cell theory. And just a reminder that there are three parts to cell theory um, underneath Unit 3. Um, all living things are composed of cells, so when we look at new life or things like that, the first question we ask are, are they made up of cells? The second part to cell theory, cells are the basic units of structure and function um, in living things. Um, so they do all the functions, they provide the structure, the support, and the processes um, for life. The last part to cell theory are new cells are produced from existing cells. So if you're looking back at things that we talked about in Unit 1, spontaneous generation, we know that that is false because that every life form that we have seen, um, we know that they came from another um, life form. So it goes back to and simplifying that um, new cells are produced from old cells. The first person to, or the person that gave name to um, cells was this guy named Robert Hooke. Uh, looking through an old microscope, um, compound microscope, is he found um, these little structures and he was looking at a, a sliced up cork out of a, a bottle and he noticed that they all look like these um, monastery um, compartments that he was living in at the time and he called them cells and I kind of like to think of them or um, as prison cells or jail cells and they're compartmentalized because he was looking at a, uh, plant cells. Uh, the two different things that you need to know uh, are prokaryotic cells um, like bacteria and eukaryotic cells like us. Um, there are two different types of cells. Prokaryotic cells tend not to have organelles. Uh, eukaryotic cells have organelles and remember organelles are specialized structures inside of cells kind of like our heart, liver, and lungs uh, but we'll give them different names. So, uh, prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, they tend not to have organelles, and they're a lot smaller. Uh, eukaryotic cells are a lot larger, and there are, um, for right now, f uh, four kingdoms that apply to eukaryotic cells. They're animal, plants, protists, and uh, fungus. Um, what I'd like to do is take you to, um, and look at two different types of cells. Uh, this is an animal cell. Please remember that animal cells have centrioles on them, and that's these guys right here. They're used in mitosis to pull chromosomes apart into sister chromatids. And then we have another type of cell right here. Uh, this is a plant cell. Um, plant cells have a cell wall around the cell membrane. They tend to have these little guys in here. And if we move this up a little bit, um, chloroplast um, that aid in photosynthesis. So again, plant cells have a cell wall and they have a chloroplast that aid in photosynthesis and I want to zoom back out here maybe let's go this way all right so some of the things we probably ought to go through if we go back and jump on our PowerPoint here um, comparing and contrasting plants have cell walls uh, chloroplast animal cells have centrioles and do not have a cell wall they just have a cell membrane on the outside and we'll look at this picture as we, as we go through more. Um, so going back here, what are some of the organelles? Well, again, centrioles, which are in animal cells right here, these two little red guys, um, aid in cell division and more specifically in mitosis. Both types of cells have cytoplasm, so all this gray space in between is a jelly-like substance that um, where glycolysis happens. Um, so cytoplasm is where glycolysis happens. It's breaking down sugar in both animal and plant cells. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's a rough endoplasmic reticulum which synthesizes proteins. Uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum have ribosomes on them uh, and those are proteins that help synthesize um, proteins that actually do a lot of other work. And then there's a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They process and synthesize lipids. So I think of uh, lipids as a smooth, like lotion has a lot of lipids in it. So I think of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, I think of lotion. Um, another organelle is the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus um, is like the UPS store. It packages and modifies stuff that's sent to it in the cell. So the rough ER could send some protein, so it would modify it, it would package it, and it would send it to other places in the cell, just like the UPS store. Um, the next one, lysosomes. These are the janitors or the garbage people inside of the cell. Uh, lysosomes break down or organelles, excuse me, and they also 
um, take macro molecules. So like, let's pretend that you ate a big pizza for lunch. In the cell world, it would take that pizza and break it down into smaller pieces so the mitochondria uh, could use that to make um, energy and ATP out of. So lysosomes clean up the cell, but they also break down larger molecules into smaller molecules. Mitochondria, which is this guy right here, um, these folds are called cristae. They actually do cellular respiration here. Um, one glucose molecule gets turned into 36 ATP in this guy right here. Um, they are the powerhouse of the cell. They make all the ATP. Um, other ones, nucleus right here. This guy stores DNA and all the DNA in our bodies are stored in every single one of our cells in this guy called the nucleus. Um, the nucleus is in charge of the cell, if you will, because it has all the information to pass on to the other organelles. Uh, plasma membrane, you may also see this called the cell membrane. Please remember this is made of phospholipid bilayers, so those little um, phospholipids that have a water-loving side and a water-hating side. Uh, they regulate what goes in and out of the cell. Ribosomes we talked about, they are either attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum or they are free floating around in the cytoplasm. They um, do a lot of protein synthesis um, and we'll talk about them a lot in um, once we get to translation. Vacuoles are basically like storage compartments. They're like lockers. They store, um, in an animal cell, they store small amounts of food and water and other things for cell to use later. And then vesicles. Um, are like the UPS truck. They go from the Golgi apparatus and take things um, throughout the cell and they can also exchange materials between cells. Let's jump to the plant cell here real quick and make sure that um, we are um, kind of talking about the differences. Again, plant cells have a chloroplast cell wall in them and they have a large centralized vacuole. And we're gonna back out here a little bit. So moving out, there we go. If you can see right here where this arrow is, that's a large centralized vacuole. This creates turgor pressure, so when a plant is wilting, it means that that large vacuole is losing water. Then we have the mitochondria, which are implant cells. And the thing that's different, again, are that large central vacuole. Then we have a cell wall around a cell membrane or plasma membrane, and we also have chloroplasts. All right, so those are some of the organelles. Uh, the function of the cell membrane is to enter or regulate what goes inside and outside of a cell. And um, because there are certain things that can go in and out, like water is small enough to go in and out, um, it kind of maintains um, equilibrium on its own because of these next couple things. You have diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, and active transport. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from a high concentration, low concentration. Why that happens is because molecules are always moving because of temperature. They are running into each other and because they're running into each other, we get this natural spacing out. So if I take these little red molecules here, they will naturally because of temperature and depending on how hot it is, if it's hot, they'll move across quick, more quickly. If it's cooler, they'll move out quickly. But molecules go from a high concentration right here to a low concentration and then once they reach equilibrium they're evenly spaced and they'll continue when it comes to um, the cell membrane moving across back and forth. So what's happening here is you'll see these little water molecules in this osmosis they'll move across until um, once equilibrium's reached then these water molecules will be. So they'll be like let's say there's 90% water here and 10% water here they'll move from a high concentration to a low concentration and be um, equalize on both sides. Um, this is osmotic pressure and what's happening is we're moving the water concentration. There's m less water over here than there is here compared to this um, solute, this guy right here. Um, what's going to happen is water is going to move up this P-trap to create what's called osmotic pressure and you'll actually be able to do pretty cool things with that. So again, diffusion is the movement of particles from a high concentration to a low concentration. Osmosis is the movement of water from a high concentration to a low concentration of water. And jumping back to our PowerPoint slide, we need to make sure we're on task here, hopefully. Maybe. There we go. Uh, facilitated diffusion is, remember those protein channels that are in the phospholipids? Facilitated means that it it's a place or a gate that larger molecules can go through. Um, they'll have like carbohydrate keys to get in so not anything just go through. 
but there'll be a place or a certain gate to get in and out of, um, and that's facilitated distribution. It still goes from a high concentration to a low concentration. Active transport, I remember that active transport has an A at the beginning and a T at the beginning of transport. It takes energy or ATP to move, and it goes in the opposite direction. It goes from a low concentration with energy to a high concentration, and this helps us maintain um, homeostasis and balance also. The last part is identifying the levels of organization for a multicellular organism. Please remember that in eukaryotic cells and um, like us, larger species, there is cell specialization going on. We have skin cells, we have hair cells, we have uh, muscle cells, we have bone cells, and they all create tissues. And then tissues obviously make organs and the organs make organ systems. So heart cells make heart tissue. Heart tissue comes together to make a heart, which is an organ, and then that heart will get together with all the blood vessels and arteries and veins and capillaries um, to make um, part of the cardiopulmonary system. Then we talk about the pulmonary, we add the lungs and the alveoli air sacs to that. So um, the levels are cells, tissues, organ, organ systems um, in a multicellular organism. And I hope that helps for unit three.